Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new tutorial video by WTTN. And today we'll be talking about an important, absolutely important aspect of any programming is database connectivity. Uh, so it's been quite a while since I've been making videos about WPF and uh, this is one aspect that I have not yet touched. So from this series of videos, uh, from this particular video rather, we'll be creating a series of videos of uh, database interactivity and uh, showing you how to connect your application to the database, retrieving, inserting, updating, deleting and all the wonderful stuff that you can do, making your application absolutely uh, dynamic. So. For today's example we are starting out with a very basic WPF application uh, but before that I would like to mention that this is Visual Studio 2015 yes we have upgraded from 2012 to 2015 now uh, lots of new stuff lots of exciting new things coming in but for the time being uh, we will not be talking about those things because we have a very nice tutorial to concentrate on okay so this particular uh, application is a, the default application that I have created of WPF. Okay, so to connect to any database in uh, C Sharp or in WPF or even in ASP.NET, what you need is a connector. A connector is basically an interpreter uh, who talks between the database and your application. So that particular connector for our case is MySQL connector. I'll be leaving a link below where you can get your dotnet mysql connector okay so once you have installed your connector mysql connector all you need to do is add a reference i've already done that and as you can see over here it's mysql.data if you are using it for websites and asp.net applications it will be mysql.web okay so after the addition of your connector you are now capable of adding uh, database connectivity to your application so uh, what we'll be doing is we will be connecting to our MySQL database running on this particular machine locally and we'll be retrieving some information from a particular table and then displaying it onto the screen. So very basic step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial this one is going to be and uh, very basic operation that we are performing of a select. So let's get started with uh, adding a data grid. Let's take this particular data grid, add it over here. As you can see, it is encompassing the entirety of the screen. I don't want that to happen, so I'll just reduce it a little bit. Fantastic. Okay, so once you have added your data grid, all you need to do is write in item source. I want to tell my data grid that this particular data grid will be filled in later or is it dynamic in nature. So for this to happen, it needs to know where the data is going to be coming from and that's why we are saying that the data will be binded that means the item source is equal to binding which implies data will be binded later dynamically so let's come into our c sharp now once we have added the database uh, data grid onto our xml we'll come to c sharp class uh, so as you can see i've just defined a variable called connection string now this is the part which tells your application as to how to connect to your database. So my server is localhost. You can write in your IP as well because this MySQL server is running locally. So this will be localhost. The name of the database, the user and the password. The password is blank because MySQL default root password is usually blank. But uh, whatever is the password, you can write it A over here. And once you have written, declared a string called connection string. This connection string is to be implemented in a MySQL connection. Okay, so we'll just name it connection, the variable new MySQL connection. And I, as you can see, the second constructor is a parameterized, single parameterized constructor taking in the connection string. So I'll just copy paste this particular variable over here. And uh, once this statement executes, you have an active connection to your database. So this application will be able to connect to the MySQL database that is on localhost and the database name is test underscore db. Okay, so now to query. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a MySQL command object. 
very simple mysql command let's call it cmd equal to new mysql command so there are four constructors for this one so as you can see it's with the query with the query and the connection and the query and the connection and the transaction so mysql transaction so transaction is a concept that we'll be covering in our future tutorial videos we don't have to be concerned about them right now we'll be using the third constructor that is defining the query that we want to execute and the connection we want this particular SQL command to use. So let's type in our query and let us put it in our connection as well. So just added connection. Now let's type in our query. The SQL query is very simple. Select so start from test underscore users. The table name should be correct and your syntax your sql syntax should also be correct for it to work properly okay so once this is done what we are going to do is uh, we're going to take all the data that is present inside test underscore users and then we're going to read it and we're going to bind it with our data grid that has been defined in our xaml so for this to happen we need to actually execute this cfd dot execute a reader fantastic but what will this do this will just execute the query but we need to capture that particular query so what we're going to do is we're going to define a data table data table dt equal to new data table it will be an empty constructor and now we're going to load everything inside this particular data table so this is how we do it we defined a data table dd equal to new data table and then we took that data table and load the result of the reader inside the data table so this is the magic of dotnet it does the conversion for you it takes whatever data this execute reader is returning and it will add it to your data table this is a newer method what you can do otherwise is actually read the data row by row but i don't do that i don't recommend it because execute the query as soon as possible and put it inside your data table and then read the data table instead that way your connection is active for the minimal time possible okay so once you've done this you're not through actually what happens is we need to open our connection before we execute anything so i'm going to open this connection and then i'm going to close it as well because that is how database connectivity works you need to open your connection so that the connection can then execute your query and then you need to close that connection as well so once you have done this you have all your data table uh, loaded with the data we're going to bind it with our data grid so the name is data grid Oh, sorry i think i have not named it let's just let's just add the name real quick name it dt grid copy paste this name over here dt grid dot data context equal to dt the data table save both ends now as you can see our flow is very simple we have defined a connection string given that connection string to a mysql connection object we have used a mysql command to execute our query and we have passed it the connection that we wanted to use we have opened the connection defined the data table loaded all the data from our command inside the data table using the dt.load function and then we have closed the connection we have taken the data grid that we defined in xaml and we have set the data context of it to this particular data table and now let us just execute this particular code and let's see the output and fantastic as you can see we have two active entries inside the data table uh, with id name and status which is coming from the database if i say if i just change the query a little bit where id equal to 100 so let's just execute this code and we'll be returning with just one row that is test user one who is now active 
this data is active. So as you can see, database connectivity in its very simple and uh, primitive style is very, very easy to implement if you know what needs to be done. So this was a very quick tutorial on just having a very basic connection with your database and then executing a very basic select query to bring in some records and displaying it into a data grid on your XML or your application. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you really followed along this one and you uh, have any queries or if you have any suggestions as to how we need to move forward with database connectivity, uh, do write in a comment. If you like the video, do leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more exciting and knowledgeable videos. So, thank you for watching and this was WTTN.